What is up, everybody? Welcome to Support Force Live, episode eight, with our Twitter manager, Kayla Creates. Hope you're all having a great day out there. Uh, thank you for coming out and supporting this wonderful platform to be able to showcase our members, uh, our staff, and as well as you out there. Everybody will eventually get their chance to be on this pod. Uh, it's just a matter of time when somebody gets on, not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. So thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging out with us and showing us the love. Remember that you can easily join up with Support Force by going to supportforce.co, supportforce.ca, supportforce.info, and you can read about us and learn about what we're about and join our Discord and become a part of one of the fastest growing Discord communities out there. Uh, we are a multi-platform streaming community where no matter what platform you are, whether it's Mixer, DLive, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, doesn't matter what you do, whether it's music, gaming, makeup artists, or modeling as our good friend Rebel Rods is. And, oh, did I hit 500? Oh, wow. Shoot, I didn't even see I was at 500. It didn't update for me. That's awesome. Uh, but we will help you in your endeavors and achieve your goals to the best of our ability. Uh, so make sure you come out there and sign up and uh, find out what we're about and become our family because that's what we all are. We're all a big, big family. Oh, now that we got the regular stuff out of the way, it's time to get to our special guest of honor. She is our Twitter manager. She is a makeup artist and she has jumped in with both feet and really become a huge part of this community. And we just can't th say enough good things about her and how good of a person she is. Uh, I know that uh, one Spuds Blobs will tell you that she makes him a better person, I am sure, because he can't be much worse. Ha! Ah, just kidding, buddy. But without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our Twitter manager, none other than Miss Kayla Creates. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, how are you today, Kayla? I am fantastic. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. And uh, I hope Ryan heard that, that I'm sure you do make him a better person. <laughs> I hope so. He's out in the living room. He says he's watching. <laughs> he better be watching. Ah, there's the heart. He, yes, he is watching. <laughs> so, Kaylee, how is your day today? It's going pretty well. Today was my last day before uh, being off for a while for Christmas. So Nice. Got a lot done. <laughs> Very busy, but it was fun. That's awesome. Uh, why don't you tell the people a little bit about what you do outside of Support Force for work? Um, so I am a marine biologist. I work on a uh, small barrier island uh, off the coast of North Carolina, and uh, I work for a conservancy. And the conservancy is known for um, just barrier island conservation and sea turtle conservation. Um, and I am an educator there. So I'm teaching people about the island, about the science that we are doing. Um, sometimes we have summer camps in the summer um, and we do other uh, programs as well, learning about reptiles or uh, tide pool animals and things like that. Nice. Um, yeah, I have to take a ferry every day, ferry, golf cart. There's no cars on the island. Um, so. I drive to the ferry, take the ferry over, and then golf cart to work. <laughs> oh, nice. Now, do they allow you to have, like, a bike on the island and everything? Can you use a bicycle? Mm -hmm. or, or is it too far for you to, to really do that? You could bike, but it's about a 15-minute golf cart ride. Oh. So it's it would be pretty far. I would totally be down, except I uh, I don't have the best lungs. So <laughs> gotcha. I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. <laughs> No, completely understand that one for sure. Um, yes, Rebel Rod says, turtles are dumb, quoted by Kayleigh. Turtles Kale. are dumb. <laughs> turtles are dumb and I love them. <laughs> That's awesome, though, because you are, you know, educating youth of America about, you know, uh, environmental conservation with with sea life. And, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, needs to be out there. And, you know, I thank you for 
getting that out there to the youth of America too, as well, because like I said, that's it's very, very, very important uh, for, oh, for them you. to know. <laughs> um, what did you tell us about? What's what, say? Tell us about one of your finer moments uh, on your job and uh, something that maybe you're like, you can't believe that happened. This specific job or just um, work in general? Because <laughs> I have only been at this job about six months. Okay. Were you, did you have another marine biologist job before this? Uh, I had a few. Okay. I worked, I worked at an aquarium nearby um, mm -hmm. in Wilmington, well, outside of Wilmington. And then I had a few internships as well. <laughs> okay. okay overall what was your finest moment and then what was one that you were just like eh? um okay so i'm a turtle girl i love sea turtles i have like turtle everything i have a turtle necklace turtle earrings mm -hmm. i have three turtles at home um so basically anything to do with sea turtles is my finer moments uh so the job that i had straight out of college is um I was working in Hawaii on the Big Island. I was uh, hiking down to remote beaches. So I was hiking like six miles a day mm -hmm. um, to remote beaches to go look for turtle nests, uh, take data on nesting sea turtles. Um, and that was definitely the best, especially when I could see a mom lay and two months later I could see her nest hatch because baby sea turtles are the cutest thing in the entire world. You cannot argue with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, that is definitely like top moment of probably my whole life. Okay. Um, but the yeesh moment, I have like a specific one in mind and I'm already like, <laughs> um, so I used to work at the aquarium. I had an internship there, um, as an educator and actually that job is what led me to my position now. Right. Um, but, uh. I used to have to do dive shows. So we have this big tank that a scuba diver goes in. Um, they We usually have two or three in there, and two of them are cleaning the tank. And then one has a mask that has a microphone in it that's connected to our intercom. So it's really cool. Um, and then I would be standing outside with a microphone so I could talk to the person who's in the tank. And... <laughs> There was one day, it was my very last day, I was all excited to do the dive show because it was one of my favorite parts. And um, I look in, like I'm waiting for the divers to go in, and with that, a shark swims by and eats a fish. And there's blood in the water, there's like a hundred people in front of me. Um, I literally just stood there with my mic and my radio, and I was just like, um... <laughs> <laughs> so I like put my mic down and I was like, hey, um, dive locker, please don't put anyone in the water. Uh, this just happened. Like, uh, wow. and my supervisor was like, Kelly, like, what do you want to do? Do you want me to come down there? And I was like, no, I should be fine. <laughs> so I just like went on the mic and I was like, hey, guys, uh, so we're not going to be having a dive show today. The animals are a little restless. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just going to talk about the animals in the tank. And I just like went through the whole program like nice. without a diver. And <laughs> it was crazy. Like the fish were like spinning around the tank. It was nuts. <laughs> the circle of life, kids. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I was like. And people were like, did a shark eat a fish? And I was just kind of like. Yeah. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Sharks get hungry, too. I mean. It was crazy. <laughs> that's nuts. So, Kaylee, why don't you talk about how you first got involved with Support Force? Like, how did you uh, become a part of the group and what drew you in? Oof. Um. Jeez. So I have been doing YouTube um, probably about, ooh, wow, almost almost two years now. Um, and I, I don't know, I wasn't growing a whole lot. Um, I was probably still at only like 25 subs. Um, and I kind of was trying Twitch a little bit. Um, Ryan and I had only been dating mm, a little, I mean, a, a little over a year, I guess, so. But um, I was kind of just trying things out. I still was really playing with makeup, but um, Ryan always talked about this Discord thing 
And I was like, okay, that sounds weird. Just like a bunch of people you don't know all talking to each other. Like, okay. Right. Um, and then his good friend Cody, or Spuds Lightyear, as you guys know him as, messaged me and he said, hey, I just joined a new Discord and one of their um, main people is a makeup artist. And I was like, oh, okay, well, like, is she just, like, a streamer? Like, does she only use Twitch? And he's like, no, like, she's an Instagrammer. And I was like, oh, okay, like, why not? Let me try it out. And he had to totally walk me through all of it because right. I was like, I have no idea. I think I sat in, like, the accept box for, like, three days. And finally, <laughs> Marina, like, messaged me. And she's like, right. are you okay? <laughs> um, and I was like, oh, yeah, like, I thought I was through. I didn't even, um, I didn't even notice I didn't do it. Um, but as soon as I was in, I was welcomed with open arms and everybody was just so nice. And I wasn't even really, I wasn't really like uploading at that point either. So I wasn't right. really looking for the support. Like a lot of people are when they join, I was more just looking to make some friends and I very much so have, it's crazy. I have made very, very good friends and like I'm meeting Ravel Rods in person in next week. So it's just really cool how close some people have gotten on this server. And I just really want everyone to feel that way as well. Cause I feel like you guys have kind of become my family. So I want everyone else to feel that way too. <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's funny because, you know, with, with me being a gamer for as long as I have, you know, I, I forged bonds with people and I know somebody like you who's not really in the gaming scene and everything. This is still kind of new. All. You probably th saw this from the outside looking in going, okay, that's crazy to talk about. And now that you're in it, you're like, why didn't I do this sooner? Mm -hmm. I'm like, Discord, guys, it's so fun. <laughs> right, exactly. So it's it's one of those things where it's it's a little intimidating at first, but once you're in, it's just there's no other way to do it. You know, it's it's the best. It's it's honestly the best feeling because, you know, like like you said, and we'll we'll get into that here in a little bit. Is you know your your boyfriend Ryan is you know had hardships that just recently happened. You know, with his mm -hmm. him him and his mom's house burning down to the ground, they lost everything. And as a community, it shows you right there about how we came together and got him. You know, raised a thousand dollars. It was him. insane. Like it absolutely blew my mind. And it's. It's nuts because you you would think about it. It's like other than chatting back and forth through text messages, nobody really knows anybody. And for to, for everybody to come together like that for somebody that you don't even know personally, you know, it just shows a lot about one what this community means, and and two how caring people are in the world. And it gives it gives you hope for society, especially it really in these does. Days. It really did. <laughs> so. Talking about Ryan, why don't you uh, tell the people a little bit about the the Mister in your life and uh, how you met and you know how <laughs> how you finally beat him down to get to move out there with you. <laughs> I just wore him down. No, um, so uh, we've been together mm, a year and a half ish. Um, I was living at home in New Jersey. I was freshly home from Hawaii. Um, <laughs> Ryan said, oh dear. <laughs> um, but he, uh, we met on Tinder. Um, he, oh, Tinder he dates. Was, uh, traveling for work. And honestly, like, I wasn't even looking to meet up with anybody. I was just, again, just trying to meet people. I wasn't home for New Jersey. I, I didn't plan on being home in New Jersey a super long time. But um, I was just kind of trying to meet people in different ways. And I was, I don't know, I was out of a relationship for about six months. And that was a really long one, too. And we met on Tinder. His pictures, like, didn't even have his face on it. I, we, he just had a bunch of things that, like, I liked, like, hockey, his dog, like, things like that. So we started talking and really hit it off. I, again, did not think we were ever going to meet. So I like laid everything out there. I was like, hello, this is me as a human, like not holding back at all. Right. And he still liked it. So we finally ended up meeting and really hit it off. And we just kind of haven't looked back. Um, we were long distance for 
a year and a half, uh, mm -hmm. three weeks ago, he finally moved down to me. Um, Ryan has had a lot go on in his life, so everything has kind of been pushed off. Right. Slowly. Um, he was supposed to move out here last September, but lots of life things have gotten in the way. Yeah. Um, you mentioned his his house burnt down um, a little while ago, only like two months ago. Um, so that was rough, <laughs> right. but it kind of forced him out of Michigan and down to North Carolina. So here he is. He is uh, sitting in the other room watching the podcast. <laughs> but yeah, that is a little bit about our story. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. And it's, you know, I joke about, you know, beating him down to finally get down there. But I'm sure it's, you know, um, especially with everything going on, a change of scenery does does the body a lot of good for that, too. Um, so and I know mm -hmm. wanted to get his mom straight and everything else, too, before, he, you know, he mm -hmm. felt comfortable coming down. And I'm glad he he's able to do that. I'm glad you guys can start your lives together. Me too. You know, so very, very excited for what's to come. Um, CJS, thank you so much for the two guineas. You are awesome. That is amazing. <laughs> that is unbelievable. And you get the special four, four, four. Thank you so much, Brian. <laughs> and then also Amp for the for the diamond. Thank you very much for that as well. <laughs> SpongeBob, did you start the fire? Winky face. <laughs> No. <laughs> so, uh, Kaylee, why don't you tell us a little bit about your role as the Twitter manager for Support Force and uh, what you uh, what you do and what you are hoping to achieve here in the near future and then also the distant future with the platform. Yeah. So, um, Twitter manager, I honestly think is very fun um, because there is it's very quick and it's very personal like it's just like a whole long conversation and i really like that about twitter i've had twitter for a very long time but i've never been good at it um but i took over pretty quickly for twitter manager so i just kind of like hopped into it right and i learned from what's working what's not working um slowly we made a bit of a plan to try and figure out like what we wanted. Um, so I am looking for a lot of just engagement. So I really mm -hmm. want it to people who are not in support force to know what it feels like to be in support force before they're even there. Um, so everyone commenting on it, everyone sharing it, everyone um, just, I don't know, we all seem like a family on the Twitter. So I feel like if you're a family on this pages twitter not even a personal one right what's it like actually in it um so Absolutely. i've been trying to do lots of questions lots of tell us your story lots of dropping your links so um i'm trying to portray what we have inside the discord outside of it oh yeah absolutely and i think it's a perfect <laughs> way to do it too as well mm -hmm. <laughs> So what are you hoping for to happen uh, with Twitter for, let's say, before or just after the new year? And then what do you expect like in a year from now? Oh, man. Um, I don't know. I, I'm more working on short term goals just because I'm just trying to get that engagement up. And I feel like that's kind of Twitter as a whole is that I'm just consistently learning what's working, learning what's not working. I'm hoping in the future I'll have more more of an understanding of what what works, what doesn't. Um, because it is, it's always a learning curve. Like what questions are like complete duds right. and which ones are really working. So um, I'm hoping that in the next couple weeks I can continue through the holidays. I have found a great app for people who are content creators. If you want to schedule your posts, I've been using Hootsuite for the actual posts. So then I am not late on posting them. Mm -hmm. And then I can go in and engage after that they are posted. Um, I have a busy job. I work uh, eight to five with an hour commute. Um, so I don't have a lot of time to actually get those posts out there. 
but I do have time in between things to comment or reply. So um, if you guys need it, Hootsuite is awesome. Um, and I, that's more my plans is to just be more consistent, help other people grow as well mm -hmm. and help other people really see what we are as a family. Um, even if the Twitter doesn't grow a whole lot, I'd just be happy if it's showing people what support force is like, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. It does. I think that's perfect and it's well said and you know i'm sure there's no doubt that you'll be able to achieve any goal that you set because you've just you've <laughs> just you. taken this by storm and ran with it um you know with really next to no guidance on it honestly you kind of brought it you know <laughs> i know you had a little bit but you know you pretty much ran with it on your own and we couldn't be happier with you for for what you've done and what you continue to do for us yes and i'm also very lucky that i have an assistant um, Miss Madly Invincible has helped me out so much. Um, so whenever I'm not able to post something, she is. Right. So she's the one who's posting all the birthday shout outs and things like that. So um, I'm very lucky to have her because I wouldn't be able to do it all on my own. Right. Well, that's awesome. You know, it's, it's good to have a, a, a partner in crime, so to speak, you know, and Madly, you know, definitely attacks it, you know, with full force as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I just want to. I'm going to share some stuff here. We're gonna just want to share some of your looks. Here. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> so looking at this one, it says you know it's uh, your the mermaid underneath, and it's talk about that this is your first Halloween tutorial. Why don't you talk a little bit about this look that you were doing here? Oh man, that one's from last year. Um, that one is one of the first looks that took me a very long time. That one took me so long that the sun set as I was doing it. Nice. Um, and I had to go get a light to put in front of me because I didn't have a real camera or anything yet. I was sitting down in front of my, my back door because I had a sliding glass door. So I was sitting down in front of it doing this. Right. Um, filming with my phone. So, um... I did this one. I saw that that year there was a lot of like peeling face looks like this. Um, right. So I learned from a lot of different people. Honestly, it's so long ago. I don't remember who, um, but I always joke around that I'm a mermaid. I have always been drawn to the water, hence marine biologist. I have an ocean tapestry behind me. Um, I currently have a turtle tank with a filter going. Like I, I'm always around water. Um, so the mermaid look just kind of popped out in my mind. Right. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I'm a mermaid underneath it all. <laughs> well, I want to touch on probably one of my favorite looks that, I, that I've seen you do. I love this look. <laughs> I love the, the Sally, Sally look. It's, I think, I think it was amazing and it was, it's so well done. <laughs> that this is honestly probably my favorite one that you that you've done oh that one was surprisingly easy um i don't consider myself a painter so i this was my first second time second time actually painting um mm -hmm. so that was definitely a learning curve i do not have good paint you can see that it's all like patchy all over my face it's not like one color it works with this look but i wasn't going for that <laughs> right um the rest is all like eyeliner and stuff that was ryan's idea actually it's one of his favorite movies um so i went with it <laughs> nice well it was well done and uh great job on that as well <laughs> thank you now well, we i know you guys uh, do a lot of uh collabs and whatnot this one right here is that all paint too the fluorescent paints and everything um none of it is paint none of it is okay um, so it is, the colors are eyeshadow, um, the black is all eyeliner, and the white on top is also eyeliner. Right, but this, is all, this isn't this is like um, a filter or anything like that. This is oh, all no. hand-drawn and everything by you. Yeah, that's, that's all hand-drawn. That look took me over three hours. Because <laughs> it honestly looks like it would be like a Snapchat filter. That's how well that's done. Mm -mm, not a Snapchat filter. <laughs> that one is my favorite that I've ever done. Is it? 
Yes. Why is that? Why is this one your favorite? It is just um, a crazy improvement. Um, so you showed my mermaid look from last year. I also did a kind of a skull last year as well. And I don't know, I wasn't super proud of it. Um, and then I tried this one and it is just... I don't know. I finally felt like I am where I would like to be. Um, I finally feel like confident posting my looks and things like that. And this one right. is one that I finally, I was like, hell yeah. Nice. <laughs> and, um, I was very excited when I went up. Well, that's great. Especially to have that pride in your work and feel comfortable. Like, yes, this is, this is what I was going for. This is, you, you see your trajectory and you know, that it's, it's ramped up, ramped up and you're getting, like you said, you're at the point where you, where you wanted to be. Now was mm -hmm. the skull one. Yeah. It's next to the mermaid one. I think. Yeah. That's down what... there. That was last year at the same time. And I just, I don't know. I didn't feel super, super excited about it. So I felt right. like I just improved a lot. Yeah. You, I mean, you definitely have when you can go through and look and see, you can see that you started taking more chances here and it, mm -hmm. it's paid off tenfold. Mm -hmm. Now this one, Oh, I hate that one. The brat style. I hate that one. <laughs> <laughs> the lips are a filter on that one. I could not get them to work. My lips stick out a lot, so I could not get that to work. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's pretty. That's a pretty funny one. Not funny as in like you you did a bad job. Just funny that it's a brat style. You know. I know, right? That was a trend on YouTube at the time. And you're, of course, the, I think this is this the most recent collab one that you did with the Powder, uh, the Powerpuff uh, Girls. Yes, I have another one in the works that I'm editing currently. Mm -hmm. um, that one's going to be going up on Tuesday, um, or I might post it on Monday. Um, but that one is going up pretty soon as well. Now, let me ask you. you now you can you don't have to say anything. You can blink twice if you need to let me know. But is this really pain or is this from Ryan? <laughs> it was Ryan's idea, but no, oh, oh, it was it. Ryan's idea, huh? Oh, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, very, very good. I'm glad you know we were able to showcase uh, some of that and you know show your work and <laughs> thank you. And it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> um, but let's see, Rebel. Let's see. There's a couple questions here. So Rebel says, "Was there a look you did where you were?" dying and you scrapped it i'm oh you were done and you scrapped it like you did it and you were like nope don't like it and scrapped it all no um honestly i have not um if i did i probably would have scrapped that brats doll one um but a lot of them i will continue fiddling with it until i'm happy with it um I'm not really, I'm not one to quit anything. Um, so I will continue with it until I'm happy with it. And once I feel like it's finished, I'm finished. Um, I don't consider myself a perfectionist. So I, I don't know. I see myself, like, I know that it's art. So it's not supposed to be perfect. I know that I am not a makeup artist. Like, I'm not a trained artist. So... I know that it's not supposed to be perfect and this is for fun for me. Like this is my, I completely love my job and I completely love my schooling. So this is just a creative outlet for me. Right. So no, I have not scrapped anything and I'm actually pretty proud of that now saying it out loud. <laughs> well, I'll tell you this is you say you're not a makeup artist. I think those pictures show differently that you are. <laughs> so don't I mean, sell yourself a short. Makeup artist. Like I didn't go to school for it. <laughs> Well, that's fine though, but you definitely are a makeup artist with those all those <laughs> looks and everything that you posted. Um, Mrs. Rabble asks, what are your plans for next week for the holidays? <laughs> <laughs> she is uh, leading with that question. Yeah. Um, next week, actually, I am going home on Saturday, um, packing up the car with the boyfriend and the dog, driving all the way up to New Jersey. Um, that's where my whole family is. Shout out to mom and dad because they're watching right now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but I'm heading up there. Uh, I am part of a very large family. So Christmas Eve, um, 
my whole dad's side of the family comes together. Uh, every other year, it's all of us. This is considered a small year, so there's only like seven families coming instead of you know like twelve. So, um, <laughs> so it's gonna be um, a little bit smaller, but it's still gonna be really fun. Uh, we have a big Polish. Uh, feast basically mm. um then christmas day we see my mom's family um and then on the 27th ryan and i are driving up to upstate new york to meet mr and mrs ravels <laughs> yay yay <laughs> uh looking back at the chat because when i had everything up i didn't see anything uh cqp as uh what is your favorite beer and why oh man um I really like sour beers. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite. I I really like the dogfish at uh, dogfish head like sea quench. So it's like a a teal can. Um, mm -hmm. That's usually my like go to currently. Um, I also am a blue moon girl, so find those everywhere. So I love those. Um, but my whole family are Bud Light drinkers, so. Oh. I'm also very happy with the Bud Light. <laughs> I can't drink it anymore. I can't. I tried. <laughs> Basically anything but an IPA. I'm good with. <laughs> yeah, I'm. I I never really liked IPAs because it's too hoppy. But honestly, if you drink some of the New England IPAs, they're not that bad. They're really okay. not. There's not that that hoppy taste to it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, being here in Michigan, we have like so many microbreweries around and it's just crazy how much there is. And I yeah. sampled a lot, especially um, September. We went over to Grand Rapids, uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, which I think is like number two in the United States as far yeah. as concentration of microbreweries in the area. I think that's where Ryan's brother lives, question mark. Right. And they, um, I tested, I tested out a couple of New England IPAs because I never had it. And I was like, oh, these are actually pretty good. They don't taste like, you know, like uh, Bell's Brewery where you get the uh, the two hearted ale, where it's, it's a double IPA, and you're just like, holy cow, there's so much hops in it. <clears throat> um, um, Wilmington has a lot of micro brews too, so I'm starting okay. to kind of branch out with a lot of those. Um, so I've kind of been testing the waters with right. them so i kind of know what i like what i don't but slowly figuring that out <laughs> um profity asked uh any tips for content creators on twitter um one thing that i've learned is honestly there's like a sweet spot with the amount of tweets that you put out if you put out way too many then people are gonna be like wow this is annoying and um unfollow so I found that like three or four tweets a day is like max. But if it's not enough, you, people aren't going to be able to see you and you're going to get buried. So um, I've learned that um, morning tweets don't work and late night tweets don't work. So <laughs> because I am not a late night Twitter account, um, unless you are that like late night humor, then right. maybe it'll work. Um, I've learned that between like, 10 and seven is my sweet spot. Um, and I put out three to four tweets or maybe two to three tweets, depending on if there's a birthday or something. Right. Um, right in there. And it seems to be pretty good, uh, at least for our following numbers. Right. Um, if you don't tweet enough, you'll never be seen, especially if it's not every day. And I think that's what happens with my personal Twitter. Cause I tweet like once a week. Right. <laughs> but, um, there, I would say, like, the amount, um, but also try to be, like, pull that activity. So ask questions, um, share people's content, and um, things like that. So get people in because they want to be part of it as well, not just because, like, hey, wow, this person's funny, or wow, this person does really good art. Um, I've learned that also just being a human really right. helps. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. People don't want to see fake people out there. It's just, it gets annoying, mm -hmm. especially there's too much of that as, as it is anyway. Mm -hmm. You want someone genuine. 
Uh, the only masticator asked, was there already a time in years she has been doing this? So I think they want to know like how long you've been doing this for, for the, the um, makeup artist stuff. Ooh, um, I started, I think I started my YouTube January of 2018. Um, so I'm close to two years on YouTube. Um, I honestly didn't really use makeup until college i did like the typical teenage girl in the 2000s where like i wore too much eyeliner and mascara like i am very pale as you guys can see this is my natural hair color so my eyelashes are blonde my eyebrows are blonde so i just started with mascara and i was like wow this is a huge difference. Um, but then I got to high school and like later in high school and I didn't really care too much. Um, I don't really care too much about what I look like. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, oh, absolutely. Like I don't wear makeup to work or anything like that. Um, I didn't wear makeup to school. Uh, but then in college, I was uh, dating a guy in the Marine Corps and um, I went to a Marine Corps ball for the first time and I looked up YouTube videos and I was like, wow, I like makeup is art. Like, it's not just like, I don't know, like, it's not just like, wow, I need to look good for other people. And like, I didn't get it, but like makeup is art. And I, I like that part of it. Um, so I kind of got addicted <laughs> to YouTube right. tutorials for a long time. Um, and I finally branched out and started it myself in January. Um, there was a lot of, ah, a lot of uh, coming and goings of right. bad looks before YouTube. <laughs> nice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, Blob says your mom and dad are proud of you and love you, Kelly Fish. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Rye. Profity says he's a huge fan of Lion and Kugel Summer Shandy. I will tell you this, Profity, out here in Michigan, there's a place called Terry's Terrace. And when the Lion and Kugel Summer Shandy hits, when that time comes, they actually make a beer encrusted fish and chips with, made with the beer from uh, Summer Shandy. So it's got the lemony taste to it and everything. So it's honestly, it's really good. That sounds delicious. <laughs> That's so amazing. It's very good. <laughs> Uh, Amp says he goes to Grand Rapids all the time for beer. Yes, Blob says that is where my brother lives. I've toured like five different breweries. Madly, question. Favorite go-to makeup product, favorite makeup brands? Ooh. Uh, product is hard. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't have like one specific product that I really like. Um, my go-to brand is NYX Cosmetics. Um, so it's just NYX. You can find it in Walmart. I like that. Um, so it's cheap, but, um, I am all about cruelty-free. So I, it, we've been around for so long that I don't believe that you need to test on animals anymore. Um, you kind of should know that something hurts faces and something doesn't hurt faces. Right. Um, there's plenty of other ways to test it besides hurting innocent animals. Um, so I'm very, I try to be very careful um, with what I use. Unfortunately, a lot of times there's companies that hide stuff like that. Um, so I'm slowly learning that as well. But NYX is one of the companies that is cruelty-free. I love them. They make good makeup. Um, I'm wearing their eyeliner right now. Um, but that's definitely my favorite brand um but my favorite product um i like i guess i guess i'm just gonna say like a thing like i love eyeshadow because you can do anything with it like everything basically that's on my instagram and youtube almost all of it's done with eyeshadow and eyeliner so i nice. don't know you can you can do so much with it like it's just cool like you can do something that just looks like genuinely pretty or you can do something that's like art. So right. I like it. I like eyeshadow. 
Holy cow, Massacator. Thank you so much for the Ninja Gini, the Diamond, the four ice creams, five ice creams. Holy cow, seven ice creams. Four, four, four. Thank you so much, guy. Really, really appreciate it. That is amazing. Thank you for Whoa. the support and supporting the support. Whoa. And he actually, that comes in. We talk about the, the triple threat where it's a diamond, ice cream, lemon. He's come in with the Grand Slam, adding the Ninja Gini on there. <laughs> so thank you so much, bro. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I believe there was. Okay. Rabel says the big question blankets or ashtrays? What? Rabble, he says, blankets or ashtrays? I don't know what that means. Which do you prefer, blankets or ashtrays? Blankets? I don't smoke. There you go. <laughs> see, see, Rabble, nobody wants the ashtrays. Everybody wants blankets. <laughs> Isn't that right, Mrs. Rabble? Everybody wants blankets. <laughs> is that is that a question? That <laughs> yes, would you rather have a support force blanket or a support force ashtray? Oh, yes, blanket. Like, <laughs> I want those knee socks. I want those high socks like M wants. <laughs> Rabble keeps trying to push the freaking ashtray agenda, and it's not going to work. They can come out after the blanket. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's like tier five, you know? Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely not tier one. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rabble says, I want blankets, and I do smoke. <laughs> For real. All right. <laughs> My blonde came out. I knew about that to be. I just didn't. I didn't get it. <laughs> okay, Kaylee. So, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, what uh, what you do for support for us, your, the Twitter, um, you know, in your life as you know it. What, what has been your favorite thing about support for us since you've been here? Oof. Um, genuinely, um, the staff calls. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much fun talking to you guys. Like, I love talking to everybody that's on here. And just being able to get that face-to-face -face mm -hmm. helps so much. And that's why I like hopping into people's streams, especially if they have cameras. Because just seeing your face, mm -hmm. it feels so much more real. Um. So I do, I like, I have so much fun on our staff calls and like every time Ryan comments and he's like, you laughed so much tonight. And I'm like, I did. Like I genuinely have so much fun and we get a right. lot done, but I do. I have, that's, I think that has to be my favorite part so far. That's good. Well, that's good. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, so, you know, obviously you do a lot for support for us. You do a lot for work and everything. What does Kaylee like to do for fun outside of this realm? Oh man. Um, I mean, I do a lot for work and for support force. Um, but I love playing with my animals. I have three turtles, a blue lobster and a dog. Um, my blue lobster is a crayfish technically. So don't get excited. Um, he, ad but... he identifies as a blue lobster. She, she. I thought that it was, so that's a funny story. Um, I got it. They told me that it was a boy. Um, so I named it Tyrion after Game of Thrones because it's miniature. So mm -hmm. I was like, wow, that's so cute. Um, then it had eggs and I was like, okay, Tyrion's a girl. So now I have a blue lobster named Tyrion. That's a female. She currently has like five eggs. Again, she has eggs all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah there's that um i play with my dog like a lot he is uh crazy um <laughs> and, like uh he doesn't like people or other dogs or loud noises or like large objects or, or... smoke detectors going off oh my god he hates smoke detectors <laughs> <laughs> he used to sit like right here and like shake if he yeah for all those don't know we, on our staff calls madly would have a a uh, smoke detector that would be beeping that you need to change the battery out of. And her, Kaylee's dog would literally sit right behind her the whole time. And it just was like, okay, okay, enough of this. I can't, I can't hear this anymore. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> and he's not a small dog. No, like, he's not. He's like 45 pounds. Like he's a lab mix and he's just like 
sitting here and like like falling down on right. me. And he's just like, <laughs> Mom, help me! <laughs> Literally, um, he's out. He's out there with Ryan right now. But I do that. Um, play with my animals. Um, I spend a lot of time with my friends. So we will go to breweries. We'll go to the beach. I love the beach. Um, Again, mermaid. I just moved a little <laughs> bit farther away from the beach, so I'm struggling with that a little bit. So now it's like half an hour instead of 15 minutes. Um, so right. uh, it's a little bit much, but I do work at the beach, so it's fine. Um, but I also love sports, so I watch a lot of sports as well. Um, I'm especially a big fan of hockey. Uh, <laughs> And I'm a New Jersey Devils fan, so like, <clears throat> boohoo for this season. Um, could be worse. You could be a Red Wings fan. That's how bad the season. Our, oh my our gosh. season's worse. Somehow the Red Wings are worse than the Devils. I don't know how the Devils have like two great <laughs> prominent organizations that are in the yeah, toilet right I know. now. Like last year, both teams were like two years ago. They were good. Last year they were okay. This year they're bad. I don't know. Well, <laughs> I. As far as like for my for my team, the the Red Wings is at least we know that they have the right guy in there now. Now that Eiserman's come back home, and he is you know the GM, so he's proven what he can do with Tampa Bay, bringing them to prominence and everything. Yeah. So it's just a matter of, I think. Uh, well, I, I know we're, we're getting a little bit of hockey talk here, but um, he's going to get rid of the building year for sure. <laughs> he's going to get rid of Blashill after this year and get his own coach in there and get his right guy. In there and he'll build that back up and i honestly hope the devils do the same get you know get it back right again because during those mid 90s and late 90s those were some great battles between those between the two organizations i wish i was able to witness it oh. I, wish. I was uh born very shortly before the devil's first stanley cup so my dad used to like oh. like sit me like on his lap and like raise my arms be like yeah go devils because like you know as an infant you need to keep them awake yeah um so that was my first hockey experience but i wasn't really a hockey fan until high school like on my own mm -hmm. um i tried so hard to be like a girl in middle school and then i got to high school and i finally like learned the things that i liked and i was like wow yeah i don't like a lot of the girly things <laughs> um but uh I actually got into hockey because I liked a guy on the team and I was like, wow, yes, I like hockey. Um, and here I am now. So um, dating a ex hockey player too. Um, but uh, I love my devils, but I sadly never got to see them good. <laughs> well, here's the hoping that it, they get to be good again. I, there's no doubt in my mind that they, it's, it's a, I think it's a lot easier in the There's NHL so to get people on the team. They just still <laughs> suck. <laughs> well, it's just it's easier, I think, in the NHL to get back to yes, to the top. I you definitely know? agree. Especially when you see somebody ball. that's an eight seed win the Stanley Cup. You know, it's you don't see that in in the other sports. You really don't. You don't. I mean, for baseball wise, the Washington Nationals are probably the best example of something like that in another sport since they were yeah like under 500 before the all-star break and then they come back and end up winning the world series which yeah, is an which amazing is crazy. story i'm a yankee fan and i was like bummed but of all teams i was very happy that it was nationals you know right well and <laughs> want that on here's the other funny thing is, is that within the past three years the entire um 2016 yeah, the 2016 Detroit Tigers pitching rotation has won World Series rings. The whole thing. That's crazy. Ver, you got Verlander with Houston. Then you had David Price, Rick Porcello with the Red Sox. And then you you recently just had um, uh, Scherzer and uh, Annabelle Sanchez. All Jeez. five of those guys, the five starters of all one – World Series in the past three years with other teams. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. I mean, I was happy <laughs> for Verlander. I was happy for Verlander to get his because the dude's done so much and everything, and I'm, I was okay. happy for him. You know. I definitely but. agree with that. <clears throat> so do we have any more questions out there in the chat? Please speak up um, now. Oh, man. 
<laughs> yes, she's a craw mom. Ooh, my jersey just came out. <laughs> as long as you're not GT, uh, was it GTF? Is that what it is? Jim Tan fist pump? Oh, G Jim Tan laundry? Oh, that's a GTL. Yeah, Jim Tan laundry. I'm not tan. <laughs> uh. <laughs> when you get in the club, are you like fist bumping? No. Um, it, it's really it's really funny because like I it, like it's a thing in New Jersey to be like, how Italian are you? Like it's just a thing. Like right. people talk about it regularly. And I'd be like, I'm not. Like I'm I'm Polish, <laughs> Irish, German, like Swiss. Like I'm I'm everything but Italian. <laughs> basically take like all the whitest races that don't tan and like put them together and that's right. me. Like it I'm not Italian. I don't tan. I don't. Do you have <laughs> I to, work outside, and this is what I look like. Do you have to put SPF 80 on because you'll burn? Basically, basically, I wear a hat every day. Um, and like when I'm working outside in the summer, I wear a hat. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always wear sunscreen. Always. <laughs> Coral safe sunscreen though. So. Um, Madly says favorite part of your makeup to do. Ooh. There's like different reasons to like different parts. Like I love doing, I love doing my eyebrows because it's the same every time like that. And like my base makeup, it's very like routine to me. Like I'm a very anxious person. So I like routine. So I like, I don't know. I, I like routine, but then if there's too much routine, it's like too much, but like I like, I like um, when I could do the same thing over and over again. And that's right. one reason why I like makeup because it's the same order every time. Um, I do my eyebrows, my eyes, eyeliner, base, um, powders, and then mascara and lips like every time, same order. So I like doing the ones that are like very routine for mm -hmm. like, just like it keeps me calm. It makes me feel good. Right. But then I like lips and eyeshadow because you can just go crazy okay you can just go nuts and do something crazy you could do something very like normal like just pretty browns but then also do something that like i'm unrecognizable like that skull look right so um i don't know that's what i like about it <laughs> um Profity says when are you and ryan getting married <laughs> yeesh um yeah. we haven't been together two years yet we've been living with each other three weeks um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um rebel says how have you enjoyed the streaming side of things versus youtube um it's very different like very different so i love the polished look of a youtube vid video like i like that I have a finalized product that I can put out after all of that work mm -hmm. instead of just an Instagram post because Instagram is very like very quick. It's like, Oh, see it. It's gone. And I don't know you. I just like, I like having that finalized product, but it's so much work. Like it's so much, like it takes me so long to edit, edit my, videos like i currently have a sd card in my laptop mm -hmm. also thank you ryan for the new laptop so i'm back doing youtube uh -huh. um but uh it takes me so long but streaming it's so like it's it's that like i don't know it's that like 2010s like instant gratification like it's as soon as i'm doing someone say someone saying yeah that's great or oh try this like it's so instant and you automatically know how people are feeling about it. You already know that people are watching like in that moment. Right. So it feels like just more when I stream, but I love that finalized product of a YouTube video. So I'm trying to do both. Unfortunately with the holidays, everything is completely thrown out of whack. Right. I've been saying that I'm going to stream a makeup look for like days <laughs> Um, I'm going to try and do it tomorrow. I keep saying that, but we'll see. Um, but I want to try. Okay. And, uh, but I don't know. I just, I love streaming because it is, it's so 
and it's personalized. So I feel like I'm like chatting with my friends as I'm doing my makeup. Okay. So I don't know. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> Just different. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like you said, it's a gratification. You get um, instant feedback too, you know, where you know if something's working or something's not working. Whereas, you know, you could record a whole YouTube video and then after you get done, you know, editing it and everything, looking at it going, ah, it just didn't work. It just didn't work, you know, there. Or what I did last week where I, I have a whole video filmed with no sound. Oh. No sound. I never turned my mic on. It was my first one coming back with a new computer. Right. Completely scrapped. So I guess I have gotten rid of something, but it wasn't because I didn't like the look. It was because it was unusable. <laughs> well, it sounds like the start of a couple of my podcasts where I'm like talking or my streams where I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but you got that instant <laughs> feedback. <All right>. I... <laughs> and I've had it a couple of times where I'm like, nope, got to stop it. Got to restart the stream. Got to start all over again. Oh, Dizzy says you can do a voiceover. <laughs> I know. I tried it, and it just – you could see my mouth moving like I was trying, and I just felt like it wasn't – it just wasn't right. Like, it, it right. looked like I was really trying to, like, do a voiceover when I, I, I wasn't. Like, I don't know. I feel like if I was going to do a voiceover, I would have had to, like, not show my mouth or something. And that's just way more editing than I'm, like, <laughs> able to do. <laughs> yeah, not being, like, a, a kung fu movie. Hey. Yeah, exactly. What are you doing? <laughs> I know. I'm just, like, talking. And then, like, and I'm like, hey, welcome to Kayla Creates. And I'm, like, not completely lined up. Right. Ugh, I don't know. So frustrating. That's when the OCD starts kicking in, where you're like, "Nope, it doesn't. It's, yeah. it's not exactly right." So no, nope, can't. Work. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell, masticator? Oh my god, dude's dropped two more ninja guineas. That is amazing, bro. That's like I think he's donated five guineas tonight. That's crazy. Oh, oh. oh One, there's two, two diamonds. Three. three. Four. <laughs> Holy cow. That's one, two, three, four, five, six diamonds. Whoa. Eight ice cream, nine ice cream, ten ice cream, 11, 12, 13. That's Jesus, crazy. Masticator. That is ridiculous, bro. You didn't just have that laying around, okay? I don't care what you say. I believe me from from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, thank you for that. That is Chris ridiculous, is bro. Wow, you had you had that much. You had that many lemons just laying around. That's unbelievable, man. Thank you again. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that support. <laughs> that is nuts. Wow. Sorry, that that just Jesus. Yes, thank you. Merry Christmas to you too, Masticator. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, okay, so where were we? I believe there was another question that I got to scroll back <laughs> up. <laughs> uh, let's see. Ooh. Profity says I was muted for about twenty-five minutes of a stream once. Yeah, I had that problem too. Um, oh, badly. As you are a YouTuber, who's your favorite to watch, and who inspires you? Um. I have two favorites, and they're for, like, different reasons. Um, I like Shan XO. She is a New Zealand YouTuber, and she was really the whole reason why I decided to go ahead and try it. Um, she is just... She seems very just human. And she has tons of subs. Like, she's one of the top YouTubers out there. But mm. she isn't, like, throwing around money and, like doing all these promoted things like and she is just very transparent she's like hey this video is sponsored so i'm trying it like it's not there's no undertones because there's so much drama in the youtube community and like i'm not about drama at all right so as soon as there's like drama i unsubscribe, unsubscribe from someone so i really liked her and she doesn't do anything crazy it's always like very simple looks that i feel like i can do too mm -hmm. Um, which made me feel like I could do makeup. Um, but then 
for the artistic side, I really like Glam and Gore. Even if you guys are not makeup people, like, please check her out. Um, she does just I straight up art on her face. Like, she does um, glam makeup. So, like, the really beautiful, like, glamorized one. Um, but then she also does a lot of, like, she does gore makeup. Like, she does zombies and she does, like, just crazy paints. And she makes herself into these monsters and then... Sometimes she goes to just, like, the party store and she makes something out of her. And it's just really cool. Like, it's just inspiring that she can do so much. She's, like, incredibly talented, but, like, it's inspiring. So I like to watch her because I'm like, wow, I want to do something crazy like that. So she is my favorite. Both of them are my favorite for very different reasons. Now, does she use just makeup or does she use, like, prosthetics and stuff, too? Um, a little bit of both. So, okay. like, sometimes she'll use the prosthetics, but a lot of times it's, like, things around the house. Um, or she uses the same the same things every time. She's, like, okay. she always uses latex. She always uses scab blood. She always uses, like, a couple different products that mm -hmm. like, I don't use because I'm not a special effects makeup right. person um maybe next year for halloween i'll like try it but um yeah <laughs> it's really cool now i have a question for you for my own thing is that what uh oh wait she said wait i missed the second person who did she say shan xo and glam and gore um my question for you is is this is that you know, because I, I pop into the powder room that we have in the Discord, by the way, that's for all the makeup artists. You know, they have a, their own room called the powder room where they talk and collab. Um, yeah, powder room. Um, I believe it's Feli, Feli. She, uh, you know, redid. She seems like she likes to redo, you know, a look here or there. Have you ever thought about redoing your look, such as like the skull that you don't, that you didn't really like? Um, like giving another try, knowing what you know now or anything, you know. That I you have know. thought about it, but I have so many other looks that I want to try mm -hmm. that I haven't. Um, I have thought about going back and doing like my very first Instagram post is like a blue cut crease and it's like really bad. Um, <laughs> and I thought about retrying that one, but I haven't, I haven't thought about it, but I, I could. Now that I have this new editing software, I think I can also, like, embed a second video. Because um, that's, like, a thing, too, to watch right. yourself, like, like react to your video. So I might want to follow my very first makeup tutorial. And it's, like, 20-something minutes long because I just didn't know how to edit at that point. Right. Um, there's a lot of times that, like, night walks across me because the first time I started filming, I was sitting on the floor in front of my window. Like, I did that for a very long time i finally got a ring light about a, a year ago and then i got a camera about six months ago so i used my phone in front of the window um so there was a lot of dog interaction which took a lot of time <laughs> night, night looks at you he's like hey what are you doing yeah, what's going on literally. and then <laughs> at that point he's like face level he's like here i'm like no <laughs> um but I would, I would like to do something like that, but I just haven't yet. Right. Uh, Masticator says, what's the look for Christmas? Um, if you want to see, you can either look at my TikTok. Um, I hate that I'm a TikToker, but I'm like actually somewhat popular on there. Um, <laughs> but also, uh, I have the look already posted on there. I'm working on editing the video right now. So if you want to check it out, I have it there. It's like a red and green sparkle thing going on. I honestly am thinking about making a TikTok uh, account and doing uh, little videos of because every every everyone who's a dog person knows that you always you always sit there and speak for your dogs. Like you have a voice oh, yeah. for your dogs. Well, I oh, have yeah. I have two dogs, Gabby and Gunther, and I have voices for each one of them. Whereas oh, yeah. Gunther, I act like he's Eeyore. So I'll sit there and talk as like Gunther and like, Hi, Dad, what's, what's going on? What are you doing? I just want you to pet me, you know? And then you <laughs> got Gabby who runs around and like, What are you looking at, you little bitch? Stop that shit. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Gabby has such sass and Gunther just walks around with his head like, Hey, 
what's going on? So that's say knight is either like this like sly like Russian man where he's like, Yes, pet my belly. Or he's he's like Morty. He's like, I don't know guys, I just it's really <laughs> scary over there. I really want some pets, but like there's just like a whole lot happening, so I think I'm just gonna sit over here and like I, I just it's just a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> You're a Rick and Morty fan? Oh yeah. Of course. Oh my god, did you watch did you watch last week's episode? What? No. If you haven't been not- watching the new season? N- no. They're like five episodes in. Yeah, it started like the uh, second week in November, third week in November. Ryan! <laughs> I know what I'm doing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it is amazing, especially this last one. <laughs> this whole last one was a snake version. It took so long it's, for the next it's season a, to come it's out. A frickin- it started. <laughs> It's a freaking snake version of Terminator 2. It's ridiculous. All this, the snakes are just, tss, tss, that's it. That's, and it's just ridiculous, but it's so awesome. Oh my gosh, I need this. Yes. I need this in my life. You just made my day. Um. <laughs> so we got to cut, we got to cut the pod now so she can go. <laughs> um, But no, Knight's, Knight is, is totally Morty. That's awesome. And we just like rope him into things and he's like, oh, oh, geez. Like, why am I here? <laughs> oh, I don't know about this, Kaylee. <laughs> yeah, literally. He's like, oh, mom. Oh. <laughs> yes, Rapple. That's for this past week's episode. Who else wants legs? <laughs> <laughs> he shoots a fucking snake and gives him legs and the snake's just like, ah. And so he looks, he goes, who else wants legs? And the freaking snakes just go off like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And the pod just, as Medley says, the pod just turns into everyone watching it right now. <laughs> I actually uh, fed one of our snakes at work today, and I took this, like, time-lapse video of it eating, and it was really cool. Um, I gave him, like, a frozen mouse. But okay. now I'm just, like, picturing him walking around on legs, and it's terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till you watch the episode. That's all I gotta tell I you. I have to. I will. <laughs> well, I'm glad I could make your night letting you know that there is a new season of Rick and Morty. I That's what um, we're gonna be watching before bed. Because I think, I don't think that there's another episode. Hold on a second. Let me find this. I think this was the last episode for this year because they got they have an order for like I think it's seventy episodes, and I know that this one they're doing. They did a front part. Where it's supposed to be like oh, five episodes. Oh, yeah, they, they have... did a couple in the beginning, and yeah. then they'll do more like right. after the holidays or whatever. But yeah, I'm pretty sure it's five episodes right now. Um. Oh, and in movie news too, they just released the trailer for A Quiet Place Two, which that movie was phenomenal. That was such a good movie. I watched that in Hawaii for the first time, and it was like we didn't have real Wi-Fi, so we had like someone um streaming it from like a hot spot on a phone right and we closed all of our blinds because we had a rainy day in the cabin and we all watched it together like on this tiny little screen and we were all like sitting on top of each other and every time something scary happened we would like all jump it was such a good movie <laughs> uh let's see yeah they are through five episodes so it started November tenth was the first the first episode of the new season. I can't believe I I'm I'm shocked that Ryan didn't know. And there's yeah there's five more episodes I believe after the first of the year, for this season. Oh, yes. So it is it is a pretty awesome season. I'll definitely be watching it. Uh, Madly <laughs> says, wait, why did you feed him a frozen one? Oh um so, that's another thing that I do at work. I take care of all the reptiles. We have um. Six yellow belly sliders, two corn snakes, two box turtles, and a musk turtle. Um, they're education animals, so we teach with them and things like that. But um, we feed our snakes frozen mice, like one, because then I don't need to take care of mice as well. Um, and two, uh, live mice can actually hurt the snake. Um, they can bite the snake and really hurt them, especially because um, we don't have the 
easiest um, access to vets because we're on an island. Um, so it's a lot easier to give them a frozen mouse because the frozen mouse isn't going to hurt them and it's a lot easier to store. So that brings up an interesting question then, because I didn't know that. Do they, they don't have like a resident vet that comes out or do they like, are they, is there like a scheduled one, like maybe once a week or something that comes out? Um, we are, well, before me, there was not, okay. but we're working on having like a yearly vet visit. Um, so we would either bring all the animals off Island, which I've done before for the hurricane. Yep. Um, but also, uh, we have one vet that might be able to come out to the Island. So we're kind of trying to figure that out right now. Um, I just kind of recently took care of care for them. So we're trying to figure that out currently. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause I would think that'd be pretty important, especially like what are you just like, a, let's just say you have an animal that's sick. You just, like your guys responsibility you have to crate them up, take them from the Island and take them in and try to find somebody. Or do you at least, yeah. ha do you at least have a vet in the mainland yes. that you, that you go to, you just gotta yeah. bring the animal to them. Yes. We would like to do like yearly visits just for like a wellness check, just mm -hmm. to be like, yeah, they're growing correctly. Yeah, their shell looks great. Like, this is great. Or be like, hey, this snake needs to eat more. Because I have done a little bit of husbandry in the past, but I'm not an expert. So I would love real vet opinions. I'm not a vet. So I would, I right. need help with that. Yeah, absolutely. So did you, when you were going to school for marine biology and everything, is this where you thought you would be or did you have like a grander a grander picture of your for yourself not that you're not that i'm saying you don't like what you're doing or what you're doing now doesn't have value but everybody has this image of what they want to do when you know they're doing when they talk about you know their career and everything you know what what was what was kaylee's like big plan like were you going to be like out in uh out in the middle of the ocean doing stuff or you know what, what was your plan um, that you wanted for yourself? Basically, so I uh, fell in love with marine biology when I was 14, so I was pretty young. Um, I worked all through high school, like, taking extra science classes and things like that just so I could get to my goal. Um, ended up moving 10 hours away from home so I can go to a good marine biology school. Um, and the whole time I was working towards working with sea turtles. Um I really still want to do that, mm -hmm. but I have more of an understanding of what that looks like. So it would be more of either I would have to be a professor mm -hmm. and study them on the side, um, or I would have to work for a nonprofit like the one that I am right now, or I would have to like be okay with that being a part-time thing. Um, so like, yes and no. Um, I still would like to go to grad school someday. Um, unfortunately right now there is not a lot of funding for marine biology grad school. So a lot of like science-based, um, grad schools aren't being funded very well. So that is why I haven't done it just yet. Um, but I am, I would like to go farther. Uh, if you told me in college that, that I would be at Baltic Island Conservancy, I would not. I, w I wouldn't believe it. Um, I interned there when I was in college, and I honestly really did not enjoy it. Um, but I came back, and I'm making a difference to make it into a place that I enjoy and that right. other interns someday also enjoy. So, um, no. No. Not at all. I wouldn't believe that I would be back here. Well, I think <laughs> that probably helped you too, interning there, knowing that, you know, you didn't like it, but you got a job there and now you're in a place to affect change, you know, and yeah. make an impact in that. So it's better for other people and that they want to be there. So I think that's, I think that's really cool. Yeah. Um, is there any hope that you could get back to Hawaii? That is a dream. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would love to go back to Hawaii. I would love to go back to Australia. I would love to move down to Florida. I would love, I don't know. I'm very open. Um, I'm not complete. I'm not tied to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, my whole family is in New Jersey. So that will always be my home base. Um, I will never live there again someday. Sorry, mom and dad. Um, but 
I don't know. I don't know where I'll end up. Well, let's, Ryan is excited to come with me wherever I go. So let's let's just pose this question to you. Money's not a not a problem, okay? And I said, okay, you can pick up all your stuff right now. We can move you anywhere in the world. You're not going to have the greatest house in the world. You're not going to have the worst house. You're going to have a house that's just right. Where do you want to go? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I really don't because there's so many great places. Like, all I know is I would want to be somewhere on the beach, somewhere where it's warm all the time, and that I could play with turtles. So that could be Hawaii, that could be Australia, that could be Florida, that could be the Caribbean, that could be anywhere. So, I don't know. I don't know. Here's a good I, would, I really loved the Big Island in Hawaii, but there wasn't a lot to do there. So I think I would feel trapped eventually. Um, so if I were to move to Hawaii, like long term, I would probably want to move to Maui. Um, cause there's just a bit more to do there, but it's not as built up as Oahu. Um, if I went back to Australia, I would probably want to still be in Queensland, which is like very tropical. Like it has a lot of almost rainforest, um, along with the Great Barrier Reef. Um, but there's also so many other places that I have yet to explore that I would like to explore still. <laughs> here's, a, here's a good question for you. Better movie, Moana or Finding Nemo? <sighs> They're so different. They are. <sighs> I don't know. I think I have to say, oh, gosh. I think I have to say Finding Nemo just because that's like a staple. Like I watched it with a bunch of my marine biologist fan, uh, friends and they like we tore it apart because we were like, there's no way this fish could survive at that depth. But, like, <laughs> the personalities for the fish are just like so spot on and like perfect that I, I don't know. Like I ha I just they did such a good job with Finding Nemo. Like I, that one. <laughs> I have some friends there, and he told me the smartest thing I've ever heard. It's absolutely beautiful. It's an amazing place. But at the end of... What? I think he got cut off. At the end of the day, you're on an island, and the cheapest flight is Las Vegas. For Hawaii? Yeah, I think that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I really loved it there. But it was difficult to get to. <laughs> Masticator just subscribed for three months? Jesus, dude. Goodness. Wow. Number one fan. I, I think he might be. He's up. Let me, you know what? I can look at my top contributors of all time. He is one, two, three, four, five, fifth on the list right now. He is behind Ape, who's almost at 32K. Spectre's at almost 30K. Then Take the Crown at 6.3. Rabble's at 5.3, and Opie is at 5. I'm not surprised at Opie. Oh, no. He oh, Jesus. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Four more diamonds and more ice creams to come. Jesus, Masticator. Wow. <laughs> Look at us. Guy is on fire. Wow. I don't have that money. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Dizzy. Honestly, honestly, this stream has honestly made me think that I'm gonna probably stay on D Live. I, I honestly am. I I tried the Facebook thing, and it, it's to me, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to try to stream there. Oh, really? Yeah, it it honestly is. And you're right, Rabble. I'm never leaving Team Yellow, so it's all right. <laughs> Um, I personally like the chat of D Live better. Um, like the chat on Facebook, I felt like, like I couldn't see everybody because if someone has like a uh, like a privacy thing going, I couldn't right. see them commenting on your stream, and you would like answer, and I'm like, what? <laughs> well, plus it's a pain in the ass when they're coming on with their real names, and you don't know somebody's real name, and then you're like, hey, you, who are you? And they're like, oh, I'm so and so. You're like, oh, okay, yeah, hey. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well yes Ravel. i need i need my biggest fan one two one two's mom you know to be on d live and support me over here lisa's got to support me over here um 
So, what was I going to ask you? <laughs> so, you, I know you said you you, you picked apart um, you picked apart Finding Nemo with all your marine biologist friends and everything. Do you do that a lot with uh, different uh, movies that you see that involve marine life? Um, I do that a lot with just a lot of movies. It's just like if the science behind it is. Mm-hmm it doesn't make sense. Like I, I specialize in marine biology, but in college I had to take two physics classes. I had to take three chemistries. I had to take oceanography. Um, I'm a minor in psychology. Like I do a lot of it. Um, like, and I, my favorite are, are herps. So like, um, herpetology is the study of amphibians and reptiles. And that is like my love. Like I love, I love turtles. They're so dumb, but they're so cute. But, um, so especially, like, like, honestly, like, the Jurassic Park, Jurassic World movies, I'm like, there's zero way that that could happen. Like, the sizes of these animals are wrong. Like, they're supposed to have feathers. Like, the velociraptors are supposed to be the size of a chicken. Like, they're way too big. And, like, I pick apart a lot of those things. Like, it's not just marine life. (laughs) I try to keep them to myself, because I know other people don't enjoy it. But... I do. I do pick them apart. <laughs> well, it's, it's funny because I saw – it wasn't necessarily a meme. It was actually, I think, a tweet that somebody put that said scientists are, like, within years of being able to clone dinosaurs. And somebody <laughs> somebody comments underneath it, there is literally five, five movies of why this is a bad idea. <laughs> bad idea. Why do you need a dinosaur? I don't understand. There's a reason why they're extinct. There is a reason. Also, like, <laughs> their environment that they lived in, we don't have anymore. No. We don't have the tropical environment for them. We don't have the food that they would be eating, so they would be getting sick. Like, they, they can't. It's not a good idea, not just for us, but it's also a bad idea for the animal because it's they're not going to be living the life that they're supposed to. That's reality. Pro- Profity. <laughs> I, I, I can't with you right now. I can't with you right now because I know exactly what you're thinking. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Ryan makes that joke all the time. <laughs> it's not the study of herpes, Profity, okay? That's not what that is. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Uh, well... Are there any other questions anybody have out there at all? <laughs> anybody at all? Any questions? Mom, if you have a question, you can text me. Yeah, <laughs> by all means, please. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> all right, Kaylee. Well, what we're going to do here is I'm going to give you the floor for a little bit. You can, uh, you know, say some stuff, say some closing things you want to the chat. Mm-hmm. Uh Go ahead and, you know, you can, by all means, or while you're uh, talking, Jesus, Massacator. Three ice creams. Ugh. Two lemons. Over raptors and micro raptors are chicken size. Velociraptor, velociraptors were about six feet. I love dinos, could talk all day. Okay, okay. So maybe <laughs> not velociraptors. Maybe I was wrong about that. I'm not a dino person, so I don't know. Right. Okay. I'm all about what the ice creams are. Um, so the ice creams and the Nijigini are donations. So, um, they are either you can get, um, these things, like it kind of adds up from watching. Um, but you can also, uh, like pay for them as well. So it's a donation to, uh, like Die Hard's channel. So it's pretty cool. That's what an ice cream is, mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. See? <laughs> Okay, well, um, why don't you go ahead and talk to the chat, Nat? I'm going to get your uh, all of your channels here in the chat so people can follow them and drop them in there. So you just uh, go ahead and uh, talk to the people. Okay, well, hi, guys. Um, I, I don't even know what to say. Um, thank you guys so much for coming out to watch me. Um, I love all of you guys. I am t- hoping to be back to YouTube slash streaming. Um, now that, uh, Ryan is here, it's been a lot easier. He kind of handles a lot of the, the housework, uh, cause he's around a lot more. Um, so I have a bit more time for streaming slash filming. So hopefully I'm going to be back a little bit more. Um, 
I love, love, love your input. So drop me a comment, send me a DM, let me know if there's anything that you guys want to see. If you guys even ever want to chat about biology, marine biology, like hit me up. I could talk about this stuff all day. Um, it's just so much fun. Um, thank you guys uh, just at Subforce for being like my biggest fan and supporting me in absolutely everything, helping me grow as a channel, but I'm also like helping me, me grow as a person. I am a lot more confident because of you guys. Um, I'm actually a very shy person. <laughs> so thank you guys for absolutely everything. Thank you guys for saying hi to me and thank you guys for watching us tonight. I hope that you guys had fun too. <laughs> And everybody, I've dropped all of her uh, links out there. So please go out there and follow all of her socials and uh, help this wonderful creator out. You know what? We got 27 people in the chat here. We've had an unbelievable uh, turnout. So I'm going to dump about a thousand more lemons to the chest. So we got 1.3K in here. Oh. So we are going to go ahead and open this chest up. So make sure you click and we are going to open this thing up in three, two, one, distribute. So everybody has 30 seconds to go ahead and click on it. Oh man, I clicked on it. And we'll see who <laughs> the lucky contestants are. Oh. oh you just got three followers. Yep. Hi all friend. All because of the chest. Oh, do you have to be a follower to open a chest or you something? Got, you got to be a follower to talk in here. Oh, I see. One <laughs> second. Let's see who the lucky winners are. Rabble Roz with 319. Massacre with 183. Oh, Brose with 133. Jay Bandit with 105. And Mrs. Rabble with 88. Yay. Congratulations, everybody. All you winners out there. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Chess Pirates. Congrats, guys! Congratulations to you all. Very excited. So excited! So, oh, Magic Hair donating it back with a diamond and two ice creams, three ice creams, four ice creams, five, six, seven, eight. Got eight ice creams. Thank you so much, man. That's awesome. <clears throat> Kaylee, I want to thank you very much for hanging out. I hope you're less nervous now than when you started. Uh, you did oh, yeah. wonderful. It was great talking to you. I'm sure everybody enjoyed getting to know you better. And uh, thank you so much for being such a huge part of Support Force. And thank you so much for you know, um, helping us out with everything and you are amazing and we would not be, uh, where we are today without you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, I hope you enjoy watching uh, Rick and Morty tonight. I will. <laughs> thank you guys so much for seeing me and saying hi. And thank you mom and dad for figuring out D live for this. And yee, I'm excited to watch Rick and Morty. Yay. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody out there, I'm going to be back uh, probably I'm going to give myself about a half hour and I'll be back uh, online again streaming something. I don't know what game I'm going to play yet. i got to talk to uh, QP and figure out something. But remember, as always, ladies and gentlemen, that happiness is a state of mind. Peace, love, and finance is scary to all. If you're going to have sex, work on them. Help control the pet population. Have your pet spayed or neutered. And remember, as always, stay blessed. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great night, Kaylee. Thank you so much. Yay, thank you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was so fun. Well, I'm glad you had an awesome time. I had such a good time. I love this. See, it's fun, and that's what I'm that's what I love doing. I just like I said, I when you have a large amount of people, you need to have a structure. You need to have, okay, we're going to go touch this, 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 and this. But when you're just on one-on-one, -on -one, you're just going to have a conversation, you know? <laughs> you talk, and then you just see where it goes from there. 
And, and you're really good at asking questions, too. Like, you Aww. are good at having those follow-ups and, like, continuing the conversation. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> but it's just...